All right, welcome everyone uh, to, today, to today's uh, workshop called The Creative Side of Blocks. This is the fourth in this series. Um, we do have more um, of the previous volumes on wordpress.tv, so look those up if you, um, if you get a chance. And again, these uh, resources are brought to you by learn.wordpress.org. And um, we will move forward with the first part of this presentation. So if you weren't aware, the Museum of Block Art is a, um, a virtual block art museum. So as uh, it's shortened to the MOBA. Um, so the Museum of Block Art is a pop-up virtual block art museum, which is brought to you by a collection of community members in the WordPress world. Um, with WordPress 5.8 through 6.1, um, it was packed with an increasing number of nifty design tools and the gears started turning. What wild and wonderful things could be created? Um, so the result is what you can explore in the MOBA. Um, if you're thinking to yourself that you didn't know that you could create these kinds of magical art pieces with WordPress, that's actually the intent. Um, so I'm gonna um, give you a quick look at the museum for a, a sampling of what you will find in the museum. I have like a, a virtual museum tour. Um, so block-museum.com is where you can find the museum. There you go. And um, there are a couple of ways that you can browse the, uh, the MOBA. Um, there's here is the, if you click enter museum, there's an interactive exhibit and it takes you through this virtual tour of the museum. Um, it's almost like a choose your own adventure kind of thing. Um, where you can explore the museum. Um, you can also browse the index of art here. So this will show you thumbnails of all the art that is within the museum. Um, this includes some of some previous art that Mel did. Um, so you can click on individual pieces that, um, that you're interested in. Uh, here we go. So you can view by version 5.9, 6.0, and then there's uh, this 20th anniversary exhibit that's coming up. I don't think there's anything quite there yet. Oh, there are some. Fantastic. I did not check since last week, and it's great to see that stuff there. Alrighty, so we will go over uh, submitting to the Museum of Block Art because maybe you'll be inspired by Mel's demo um, and you'll be inspired to create your own. Um, that said, I would love to introduce to you Mel Choice Juan. Um, she's a product designer, a contributor to the core and design teams, and a block artist, which is what brings her here today. Um, this is a sneak peek of the art that Mel has created recently. And um, yeah, I'll hand it over to Mel. Hey, everybody. So happy to be here. Uh, I'm Mel. I'm a product designer based in Philadelphia. And I'm a core contributor, um, as was mentioned. And um, recently, I've been doing some tech volunteering, where I've been working on WordPress sites uh, for caucuses and campaigns. Um, and so I've been doing a lot with Gutenberg and with blocks in the block editor. But uh, today I'm going to talk to you about something far less uh, practical and, and much more uh, fun and entertaining, uh, which is block art. Um, as Courtney mentioned, I did some of the um, early MOBA display. Actually, they might not even be there anymore. It might be too too early on uh, yeah, in, in the block art that. gallery. Yeah. Um, but it was really fun to just play around uh, with the block editor and try to figure out what it's capable of, uh, what I could do just by combining things like colors and columns and backgrounds. Uh, and so I've prepared a few pieces for us to go over today. I will start sharing. All right. So when I first started playing around a little bit, um, I was thinking about, um, what might a gallery in a museum look like? What might a digital gallery look like? And so I did just a very simple uh, block here where it is, let's check it out behind the scenes. What I did was a cover block 
Oh, actually I did a group block. I usually do cover blocks, so kind of surprised at myself. Um, it's a group block that has a background on it. So over here in the design tab, uh, I just have this gray background. I've set it so it is full width. And I ended up adding, instead of giving it a height, um, I just gave it a bunch of top and bottom padding. So when you hover over uh, in this sidebar, you can see just how much spacing it has there. Uh, and then I was like, okay, for a gallery, let's have a gallery. <laughs> uh, and if you haven't used the gallery block in a little while, it's actually um, evolved quite a bit. Um, you're able to control the number of columns. Uh, you can crop images. Um, more efficiently, I think, now than you used to be able to. Um, and you could also control the spacing between the images in your gallery. And so I went for something that had just a little bit of space to show that these three images are connected. And so I kind of pictured it as like a gallery wall um, in some art museum. And one thing uh, that I also really love is you can now control the individual border radius on images. So for instance, if I wanted this to just be a complete like oval shape, I could do that. And you can control them individually, which means you can make interesting combinations. And so uh, when you click on link, you can control each one individually. And so we could even do something like that. At first I was thinking about, um, like stained glass windows, which is why I kind of went for just like a very simple arch. Um, but just by combining border radius with images, you can make some really interesting patterns on your page, um, especially if you have a site where you're making, um, where you're selling products or um, even displaying some of your own art. Uh, you could kind of mix and match these border radii to uh, really interesting effects. Uh, for instance, if we were to duplicate this gallery, I could now go in and do the opposite. And you almost have this like, kind of like pill shape throughout. So there's a, just a lot that you can do, um, even just with a gallery block and border radii. And so next I thought, okay, what else can I do? Um, I really wanna try overlapping some things. That's something I've wanted to do with the block editor for a long time. Um, there isn't, sorry, I have a cat it's right there. Um, there isn't really a way right now to necessarily like layer things like you would in like a program like Photoshop, but using uh, nested blocks, you can get some pretty interesting effects. So in this case, you know, kind of replicating the Jaws movie poster with blocks. So we have some text and then that's an image, that's an image, and then this background is a gradient. So when we look at that in the editor, let's open up our list view. Uh, this is my favorite, my favorite thing uh, when building anything uh, is just being able to see kind of the block hierarchy. Uh, if I'm, if I'm finding the editor itself a little fiddly, I, I could use this to drag and drop. And so I did end up using a cover block for this. Um, and I changed the positioning. Um, so the text would be in the top rather than in the middle of this cover. Um, what else did I do? So the gradient here uh, is an overlay. And so I have white, a uh, lighter blue, and then a slightly darker blue. And kind of the cool thing about this is that um, if you like put a color over another color, it creates this hard stop rather than like a soft gradient. And so I was able to get like the white of the top of the poster to a hard stop here. Uh, down to the gradient at the bottom. Uh, so I thought that was a pretty fun effect. I've seen that um, also used really well in some patterns in the pattern directory on wordpress.org. Um, it's a good way to like combine colors and also like <laughs> provide some readable spots. Um, 
And so within that, after the paragraph, I have the stack block. So it's um, a variant on the group block. Um, so the group block is just, it's kind of a, a standard container, um, but there's now row and stack, um, which I think are using maybe Flexbox um, on the back end to determine um, like how things are distributed, like through how they like handle uh, existing. <laughs> I am I actually haven't written a ton of CSS in the past few years, um, especially since more and more development has gone kind of in the way of like needing to set up Docker before I can do anything. Uh, so I've done much honestly relied more and more and more on the editor itself and finding it significantly easier to do that these days. Um, I feel like at this point, I'm like really comfortable just building a site without any custom CSS because of the amount of control I've been able to have in the block editor and in the site editor too. Um, I've been doing a lot with uh, templates in the site editor lately. Uh, and that's been really fun to like, <laughs> something that like would have disqualified a theme for me years ago, like, oh, it would be perfect if only I could do blah, I'm now able to do. Uh, but anyway, I can get back to this pattern. So I ended up um, finding a like a free vector of a swimmer and just like editing it a little bit to be more of a silhouette and uh, doing kind of the same thing with this shark face. And so it's honestly like really just that simple where it's, it's, I guess in total, it's the cover block is one, the paragraph inside of it, the stack is three, and then the images four or five inside of it. It's like five blocks to get this kind of poster effect. Um, and if you're not relying on images too, but like just combining colors and gradients um, and text and whatnot, you can do a lot and it's like very versatile. Um, so if we go back to this, it doesn't handle being responsive super well. Uh, it's really only perfect in some contexts. Although it is pretty funny to see this guy like running away from the shark, like, oh, gonna jump in the water like a dolphin. Um, totally jumping the shark. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's funny though, cause like the gallery, because it is just really simple. It's like a gallery block inside. It handles um, resizing pretty well. So yeah, and this is just, it's honestly like it's text. Um, I changed the color and I'm also using a lot of the optional um, type tools. Um, so I'm using 2013, which comes with a bunch of fonts included. I picked enter just because it has a really nice um, bold weight. I'm using the black weight for this. Uh, it's the heaviest that comes in it. Uh, using letter spacing to make the letters closer like on the poster. Um, I can change the case to uppercase. So like right now, if I were to type like anything more, it would all be uppercase, which is really convenient. Um, setting the size. I use, so I use these type tools like constantly, uh, all the time especially if I'm doing something like this, which is art directed rather than like changing styles for an entire site. Um, it, it makes it really easy to do a bunch of like one-off things. Um, I've also been using padding and margin a lot, but in this particular one, I don't think I ended up using a bunch of styles at all. I honestly think it ended up being pretty um, stock behavior. And so once I started thinking about layering, I was like, okay, how kind of kind of how far can I push this? And I ended up with this design. So this at its core is, um, I think it's like five layers total. So I have this background here um, with the outside. I have this wall uh, and the floor is another layer. Um, the couch, all the like chair and the cat and the books. I think I ended up putting the lights um, are another layer. And then this set of plants is one. And then this set of plants is another. And actually, because it's like that, it actually scales a little bit better um, than some of the other examples. Oh, cat peeking out. 
So we'll dive into this behind the scenes. Uh, and so these are all just um, like illustrations that I made uh, and then exported as like PNGs. Yeah, and so this one is just like pretty much a ton of cover blocks. So starts with a cover block. There's another cover cover block nested. There's another cover block nested, and then finally the columns, and then in the columns images. So this first cover block, um, I think all of them are set to toggle full height, which um, essentially just makes that container the height of your browser window. So it's like a hundred uh, view heights. I think it's the unit pH. Um, and so this first one is actually this background. Um, so just like a little outdoor scene. And then on top of that, we have the uh, window and the wall. So the window is actually just cut out. So it's like the one transparent part of this image uh, and the rest of it is just solid color. And so it lets in that first cover layer behind it. Inside of that, yeah, we have our chair and lights. And then finally, the last layer we have here is columns uh, inside of here. I have it docked to the bottom. There's still a little bit of space coming in there. I'm not 100% sure where it's from. It might be uh, like a built-in um, like block spacing into the theme. Um, but I was able to get like a pretty good approximate of like putting it on like the bottom so it looked like it rested on the floor. And so these are just two columns inside of this block. Um, one with uh, this image of two. Um, I didn't change any settings here. Um, and then with this one, um, I gave it a spacer to make sure that it was pushed all the way down to the bottom of the container. And so that was like a little kind of hacky thing I had to do to get it to work. But um, I was like really hoping that I would able to, I would be able to pull this off. I had this image of a, um, like one of those like paper craft layer things where you like cut out different layers of paper and you like put them in a box. There's like an actual name for it that I forget. Um, like a diorama? So I, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but there's like some really cool art that you can do with that. And so I was like mm -hmm. trying to do kind of the same thing where it's just a bunch of overlapping layers uh, to create this like, I don't know, illustrated environment. Um, and so I wasn't content to just leave it there. I was like, can I push this just a little bit further? And I was like, okay, let's make a night scene. And so this is actually entirely the same blocks. The only difference is that I've added some uh, layers to it, uh, some like color overlays to it. So on this first layer, um, which is this scene outside, I added a black overlay that's at 70% at opacity. Or maybe it's a dark blue one, not totally black. I can't remember. Um, and so I just set it dark enough that it looked like it could conceivably be nighttime out. Um, and then on this one, I did a gradient overlay. Um, and that gave it kind of some good, there's like a, just a tiny bit of depth in here that you wouldn't get from doing a solid color. Uh, it's like, it's very subtle. You can see it, you know, if I turn it all the way up, but I tried to just get it so like the area by the window is just a tiny bit lighter than the area um, farther away from the window, just as like a kind of little you know, effect there. So I had this chair, um, the colors didn't look great once I had these overlays on them. So I actually used the duotone filter and I actually, I just used one of the standard ones. I was like, let's do the blue. And that added just enough tint. Um, to the um the like lights in the background um i actually think honestly since it was really just like one color it's just like putting black over it i don't think the blue came into play at all um i think like the the blue tint is actually coming from the um, previous cover layer i'm not totally sure really like most of this is just playing around until i get something cool um a lot of it is really unplanned like with this, I had to plan the different layers in advance. So like I sketched it out first uh, and then I made each layer in Illustrator. Um, 
but once I got into here and like started like trying to like change it, um, it was, it was really just like poking at it until it did cool things. Uh, and then I did, I applied the same filter uh, onto the images just so that it would be kind of consistent uh, since previously they had been uh, kind of like a, a green blue and I wanted them more of like a blue blue. And actually one of the cool things, we'll close this, is that because this layer with the chair has the duotone, the, the blue is actually showing up in the only light part of this uh, layer, which is the cat's eyes, which I thought created a pretty fun effect. And so we'll back off there and yeah, it looked like this and it still did pretty, pretty decently um, with resizing. I don't think it would look good on mobile, but um, it was fun for an experiment and like a piece of art rather than, you know, something functional. Um, pretty cool for presentations, you know, especially if you're using, um, there's at least one uh, like slide plugin for the block editor where you can like do presentations from it if you want. So um, yeah, that's kind of how my, like my approach here. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to see how far I could push layering, especially since um, there isn't like a native layering feature. It's just all nesting things together. And I think I got pretty far with it. I'm pretty happy with uh, the effect I was able to get with honestly like pretty minimal fuss. Um, I was able to do all of these in maybe like two hours total of just like playing around. So very cool. Happy to answer any questions about it. Yeah, do we have any questions for Mel? Um, you can type in the chat um, or if there's any of the, the steps that she took you might um, want more information on or want to see again. I'll give folks a, another minute to type. Um, are there any questions? Can you hear my cat purring in my ear? <laughs> <laughs> I did at times. I don't, not right now. I wonder if uh, the Zoom audio is, is suppressing it. Oh, it's possible. Yeah, so is this uh, this cat inspired by Voxel? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. She's always perched on like the back of things. <laughs> I'm seeing any questions coming in. Um, I'm curious uh, it, for your JAWS poster. Um, so you, you were using like the original as the inspiration where you like picking the colors from it or just eyeing it. Yeah, I uh, so there's like a couple of iterations just based on like how it was scanned. Um, but I think mm -hmm. I went for like one of these. Uh, I did color pick. Um, I threw this into Illustrator and then I started just like trying to like check out the colors. Um, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to like trace the swimmer and the um, shark. And I was like, I'm getting way too fussy about this. I just need something. And so I like <laughs> searched for like, open source SVGs or whatever. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I just like edited those a little bit to fit with the colors and use those instead. Very cool. Yeah, I always wonder where folks find You can do the same thing with like any image editor too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and for this, I was like, this I like I knew this poster would have a good um, kind of like concept of uh, overlapping since I was like, mm -hmm. I know it has text. I know it has like figures. Um, I was originally thinking it would be cool to do the um, figure and the shark in the background and then like put an overlay on top of it. But I actually think the way it works because I was using a stack, um, it I wouldn't have been able to get it to work. But actually now that I'm thinking about it, I can like, I actually kind of have an idea <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll try that next, see if I can get yeah. like some transparent water on top of them. Nice. Yeah, it's so iconic in- It really even is. Even more iconic. I'm not seeing any questions filing in. Um, All right, do we wanna submit yeah. this? Yeah, so the next part um, of this is how to submit um, art to the museum and, 
since uh, Mel just created these pieces, uh, they're not in the museum yet. So I um, thought we'd walk through the submission process. So like if you come up with your own creations and want to submit to um, be displayed in the MOBA, um, this is uh, your tutorial for that. Um, so go for it, Mel. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to submit this one here. And we'll open this up. So there's this contribute tab up here. And there's a couple guidelines. Um, you got to use the block editor, you know, makes sense. Uh, limited custom CSS. Uh, in this case, I was able to get away with not using any custom CSS at all. I've honestly used very little CSS since the um, like full suite of design tools were introduced. I'm using latest versions of WordPress. Um, I think it is pushing the boundaries um, just because I feel like I haven't seen a lot of this. I for this one, I'm like all the stuff I made myself. Um, so I am declaring it all open source, CC0, public domain, whichever. <laughs> um, but you could use the, the WordPress photo directory um, or um, Openverse on WordPress.org uh, to get images. So I made a screenshot in advance. I, what I ended up doing is I just, I literally just uh, like, I'm using Firefox for this so I can like right click, take a screenshot. Uh, and then I just like took a screenshot of the whole page and just like, I was logged out, so I uh, didn't have the admin bar, and I just used that as my as my screenshot. And so I did that in advance. Uh, the next thing you need is the HTML markup of the block. Uh, it's actually like very uh, easy to grab because all you need to do is just like so. I right now I'm selecting this first cover the like kind of like container for all of it. And I'm just gonna literally like command C where you can do um, copy block. And that actually copies the block and everything inside of it that's nested. And then when you paste it somewhere, uh, it shows the styles. And so uh, one thing it does specify in this is that it needs to get, um, the like markup needs to get added somewhere that can be linked to, um, it gets stripped from the email. Um, so you could either like provide a link to a text file that you uploaded somewhere, um, or you could put it in a code block on a post on your site. Uh, in this case, I ended up just throwing every all of my assets into a cloud up gallery. Uh, if you paste just like this HTML chunk, uh, like literally like all I did was I went here and I just like command V and it created this um, text document for me. And so this is what was actually like copied when you copy that block is all of the block markup. And then since I'm using um, images, I included the images that I'm using in this since right now, since this is, um, it's not a live site, I'm using a, uh, just like a local environment. Um, my images are all like my, yeah, fse.local. <laughs> So those images aren't going to like exist anywhere. And so I'm like providing the, the images standalone in here. It'll need to get like recreated a little bit by um, the folks who manage the, the MOBA. Hopefully that's okay. So I have my full screenshot and then I have each individual piece and my code. And so copy this link. But yeah, you could also just like do this on a post on your, or like a, a hidden page on your site if you were to contribute anything. So I'm gonna submit, uh, so my name. I'm gonna link to this cloud up. Tell them what's there. And my block code. I'm gonna give it a title. Uh, Courtney, do you remember what I called it when I sent it to you? Um, I don't recall offhand, but I have it noted. Um, 
double check that. I'm like really bad at titles. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> hardest part of anything is like creating a title for it, whether it's a post, whether it's like art. Yeah. Relaxing indoors. Oh, okay, cool. And then oh, yeah, in parentheses, you have day and so. night. Oh yeah. So in this case, uh, since I'm only submitting day, I think I'll just just call it the relaxing indoors. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then a link to my socials. So I'm just gonna do that. And am I open to having my art printed and displayed at possible events? Um, sure, why not? <laughs> That's actually a really cool thing to think about. Um, yes. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that they were doing that, but that, that seems really fun. Also completely different context. So should be interesting. Uh, do you know if, if yeah, they exist at the New York office at all? Yeah. So at the, um, the automatic offices in New York city, um, they have a gallery wall of, um, art from the block museum, as well as like from Tumblr and, um, you know, some other artists. Um, so it's pretty cool. Awesome. I haven't been. I, I hope to be able to like go to an event there one day. Just gotta get invited. So <laughs> yeah, if you, you look uh, at the um the, you know the video. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I very I might. Um uh, if you see the um the video recording of the state of the word, um you'll see the one of the gallery walls in the background. Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah. I used to work for automatic, but I don't anymore. So I'm like totally behind on like kind of like the knowledge. Okay, I'm gonna submit this. We'll see what happens. It sent, awesome. And so uh, I guess, I don't know if all of these folks or like a part of these folks um, will be reviewing, but I am assuming I'll get some sort of like message just saying like, hey, it is submitted or like it's up now. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll it. see where that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Hope to see it soon in the museum. Yeah, I think you're right. As we were um, clicking through earlier today, I noticed that they took a lot of the older pieces out. Um, and I was looking at the museum literally just like a few days ago and it had oh, all the old funny. art up <laughs> when I was putting together um, the, the deck for this. And um, yeah, looks like they updated it with new art as well as, or the, the 20th, uh, WP20, the 20th anniversary artwork. Um, Gosh, I can't believe it's the 20th like, anniversary already. Yes. <laughs> this is cool. Is yeah, this is the first like... time I'm seeing these. I guess we're gonna have to do another session with some of these artists. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you should do a WP20 session. Yeah. <laughs> the 2014. Oh man. That's amazing. I hadn't I hadn't seen these yet. Yeah, I've, this is my first time seeing these. These are really fun. So many things you can do. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I see a comment in chat. Yes, please, more artist sessions. Yeah, would love to. And if you create one yourself, we could we could do one with you. Um, yeah, I love seeing new ways of using blocks, uh, how we can just push the limit, um, as they say, in the on that contribute page. So um, yeah, thanks Mel for, for sharing your pieces with us. Uh, honestly, I was expecting yeah, just one piece me. and you gave us three. Yeah, anytime. Just, I had to play around um, a little bit to figure out what I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah, and I think that's that's the common theme I see with a lot of uh, block artists um, is that they just come up with just playing around and they something weird happens and they're like, oh, I could make something cool with this. Um, and... Yeah, it's actually more fun when you find bugs you can exploit to do cool things, mm. I think. And it's like very <laughs> ephemeral because like eventually it'll get patched. Um, but in the meantime, you can do fun, wacky things if you find like, especially like a style collision between Gutenberg and a theme. Um, <laughs> yes, this is this is Voxel who is climbing around. Yes, <laughs> as we said before, cats have a lot to say about WordPress. Um, I do. It's true. So, <laughs> um, I will share my screen one more time to, to wrap us up. Um, yeah, those were the pieces. And honestly, yeah, I could see these just hanging in, in an office somewhere on um, a gallery wall. Um, I love movie posters, so 
<laughs> I would totally go for the Jaws one. Um, so the uh, blocks that were used today, very simple. Um, cover, columns, image, spacer, and stack blocks um, are the blocks that Mel used in um, all of her art pieces. Um, and as mentioned before, this um, is the link to submitting artwork to the Museum of Block Art. If, um, if you have anything to contribute, um, please check it out there. Um, I know we already opened it up for, for questions. Uh, one more chance if you <laughs> have a question or comment, um, or if you want to share something new you've learned today about um, about using blocks or creating art. Um, I will give you all a minute. Um, but otherwise, that's it from Mel and myself. Um, I wanted to thank folks for being here um, and learning live with us. Uh, we do more online workshops uh, like these. We practically have one every day. Um, you can go to learn.wordpress.org to see uh, what's new. Um, there's also recorded video tutorials that you can view. Those are usually like five to 10 minutes in length. Um, and online workshops like these, like what we're doing right now, um, tend to be between 30 to 60 minutes. And we record all of these and upload them to wordpress.tv, as I mentioned. Um, if you'd like to keep in touch, um, you can join conversations at chat.wordpress.org. Uh, that is a um, the Making WordPress Slack. Um, so that's where folks that are contributing to the WordPress project chat about the work we're doing and the contributions that we're making. Um, otherwise, um, I think that is it. I don't see any questions. I see some greetings to Voxel and some some thanks from our attendees today. So um, yeah, that's it. Thanks again, Mel. Thanks again, Voxel. Um, thanks again to all of you yeah, for so attending much. today. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.